one way to tell the story of, uh, of AI is to look at the three different ingredients that go into AI, right? So you've got data, which is kind of like the, the information that a system learns from. It's like the textbook that we, that we learn from. If you want to learn calculus, you need a textbook, you need the data. But even if you have a textbook, you can still fail to learn calculus if you don't actually study it. And that's where processing power is important. That's the effort that the AI expends to crunch through that data and actually learn from it. But even if you have a textbook, and even if you have the work ethic to crunch through it, you can still fail to learn calculus if you're a bird. And you have a brain that's just too small <laughs> to accommodate all the information in that textbook, all those insights. And so what happened with GPT-3 was, for a long, long time, the history of AI was the history of increasing processing power. People, thanks to Moore's Law, computers were getting cheaper and cheaper. Processing was getting cheaper and cheaper. Uh, fixed academic budget could buy you twice as much compute power every two years. Everything was fine and dandy. Um, in 2012, deep learning increased that even more. It basically gave companies a reason to throw tons of money on top of that at processing power. But OpenAI realized, hey, wait a minute, this whole time, we've basically been training bird brains. Like, like, what if we try scaling this up massively? What if we build a system that has way more processing power, trained on way more data, using way, way more uh, parameters in, in our neural network, and what will we get? And they didn't really know going in. I mean, this was known as the scaling hypothesis, and it was super fringe. Like, before GPT-3, or at least before GPT-2, the idea that you could just like scale things and that that somehow would solve this problem of narrow AI was laughable. I mean, it, it was like a fringe weirdo thing to believe. All of a sudden, 2020 comes along and now we have a system with about 2% of the number of parameters as there are neurons or there, as there are synapses in the human brain. So in a way, I mean, this is a really shitty comparison, but like something like 2% of the scale of the human brain, if you wanted to really clickbaity title, um, massive, massive system, all of a sudden it unlocks all these capabilities, general purpose reasoning. And so since then, we've seen a, a scaling race across the industry and AI systems are being built like 10 times bigger every year or so. Uh, so we're very quickly approaching like very, very powerful thresholds. And Ed and I were watching this and we were kind of saying like, well, GPT-3 can do some crazy impressive things. We also know that systems are getting 10 times bigger every year. Where does this lead? Like, at what point do we get to something so impressive that it starts to pose a risk? Uh, it's, it's essentially a system that has general purpose reasoning abilities that are effectively human-like. And we need to start thinking about what, what risks that might entail. So that was the reason GPT-3 was such a catalyst. We were like, whoa, scaling seems to work. There's no obvious reason that it needs to end. So you can keep making these systems bigger and bigger. And like GPT-3 already has these crazy capabilities. That was kind of our, our aha moment. Where we're like, okay, we've thought about AI safety a lot. Uh, that was really our life's goal. Uh, and Sharpest Minds was a way of kind of getting some practice with the technology, learning how to build startups and initiatives. But like, now is probably the time to take this seriously because things seem to be moving very fast. That is super cool. And the way that you were able to describe all of that was amazing. I particularly loved the way that you gave that calculus example with, you know, you need to have the data, you need to have the processing power and then the size. Now I did quickly while you were checking, because it is something that I talked about in that episode, that 2% figure, I double checked it. It's 0.02%. 0.2%. Uh, yeah, definitely smaller than 2%, but uh, yeah, sorry. So got my number. So for me, yeah, for me, that was, I was suddenly very concerned because I was like, 2% is getting really close to human right. capacity. I was like, I'm going to need to like start getting my like doomsday prepper kit together a lot faster. Right. So, so <laughs> I think one key ingredient though is like exponentials have this funny way of making uh, right. an order of magnitude like that not matter all that much. So right. like it's 0.2% one year, but because these systems are getting 10 times bigger every year, it becomes 2% the next year. So you, you basically push back your freak out by 12 months and like <laughs> that, depending on, on who you are, that might make you feel better or worse. But like it's, um, the reality is that we're, we're entering a regime of, uh, of processing power and scale, uh, and capabilities that is obviously like we've never seen before. But, um, but we have reasons to suspect that, that this regime just keeps going. So OpenAI published in late 2019 this paper uh, on scaling laws for language models, and there have been a bunch of scaling laws papers since, that just seem to show these, these power curves that don't bend, that they just keep going. And it's an interesting question, like philosophically, is this like a 
a principle of nature, a law of nature almost, that when you scale these three things together, you just get more nuance, more learning ability, more general purpose reasoning. Right now, it's not that that's going to lead us to AGI in and of itself, but you start to wonder, like, with a couple of hacks, with a couple of extra things, self-play, um, you know, reinforcement learning piled on top, how much do you need before you start unlocking some real some real things. And there's uh, mm -hmm. there are a lot of different views on this. Um, some people think it's like imminent in the next like three years. Uh, I would say those views are probably on the alarmist side, uh, but it's pretty mainstream to talk about 10 years. Like that's not a lot of time, um, you know, by 2030, some say by 2035, but like in the scheme of things from the standpoint of human civilization, we're talking about something that is effectively imminent. Uh, whether you say imminent on the order of a couple months or a couple of years or decades, like we haven't been around that long, and um, this is going to hit us sooner rather than later on that time scale. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's not a certainty because there could end up being like some. It could be something that we're missing, but yeah, I agree with you that it seems likely that AGI is possible in our lifetimes, uh, if not soon.